Hello fiber friends. I'm here today to share a mistake I made. I messed up my grist in a project. So I'm gonna show you today what happened with my project. Let's talk about grist. Let's talk about what it means, what it means for our spinning, how it affects our projects, and I especially wanna give you some good tips so that you don't mess up the grist in any of your projects either because you don't need this heartache. <laughs> All right, let's start with some definitions and then I'm gonna show you how I messed up my project. Grist is the density of the yarn. When we talk about grist, we're talking about how much of that yarn there is for how much it it weighs. How, how thin is that yarn? How thick is that yarn? What is the diameter of the yarn and the length of the yarn? We also sometimes see the term YPP, which stands for yards per pound. And that might be a simpler way to think of it. If you have a pound of yarn, how many yards will it give you? Versus a pound of a different yarn that may give you more or less yards we will we'll be able to tell with the YPP or the grist of these yarns what projects are most appropriate for that yarn. The point is that if we spin a thicker yarn, we're going to have less yardage. And if we spin a thinner yarn, we can get more yardage because we're spreading that out. I sometimes also sort of think of it like frosting a cake. How much frosting is gonna go over that cake? If we have a cup of frosting and one cake, we can get that frosting all around the cake. But if we have a multi-tiered cake, that frosting and get spread pretty thin. So we think about our fiber the same way. When we spin a fiber, when we spin a yarn that has a lot of yardage, we're gonna spread that fiber thinner. We also get a lot of very subtle nuance, especially when we are hand spinning our yarns. You might notice that different preparations can give you a different feel to your yarn, even if your wraps per inch are the same. You might have 10 wraps per inch that you spun from a worsted yarn and it is heavy. And you might have 10 wraps per inch that you spun from a woolen yarn and it is fluffy and light and lofty. Well, that worsted yarn at 10 wraps per inch is going to have less yards per pound because it's denser. You're putting more of those fibers into the space of that yarn and that woolen yarn is going to give you more yardage because you're spreading it out in a fluffier way. It might have the same diameter, but there's a lot more air incorporated into a woolen yarn. It's a lot fluffier and that gives it a lot of warmth. So it's not bad one way or the other. Grist is just a measurement. The only thing that's going to cause trouble is if you have the wrong grist the wrong yards per pound for that yarn in the project that you're trying to do. And I messed up my project. <laughs> Grist is the cause. Well, I mean, I'm the cause because I spun it wrong. But let me show you what's going on with this project. And then I'm gonna give you some tips so that you won't do what I did. <laughs> I'll walk you through this project just real quick from the beginning. I got this beautiful, beautiful Targi wool hand dyed roving from created by LCB. It's beautiful. I love this colorway. It's called Fairy Garden and it has all of my colors in it. So I thought I need to make something with this wool. So I started spinning and I even sampled. I did it right. <laughs> I, I did it. I sampled. Let me show you. I sampled this yarn not only for color, but for grist as well. I spun this skein. I liked how the colors came together but I felt like I wanted it to be a little more incorporated, a little less of the dark, dark stripes. I wanted to brighten it up a little bit. So I knew I could do that um, by just organizing the colors in a different way through the yarn. But what I didn't like um, in particular about this was that it was a pretty dense yarn. It has some good bounce to it, but the yarn just feels a little ropey. So I thought I'm going to draft it out a little further so that it 
it it squishes up with the twist and fluffs up and has a little bit more air incorporated in it so it's not so dense and packed in by the twist if that makes sense so I did another sample and I liked this one much better this one still has the bounce that I was going for but it's lighter, it's a loftier yarn, it's a little squishier, it's not as dense and drapey as this one. And I thought, aha, this is the yarn I want for my project. I did everything right. So I spun up some swatches uh, to make sure that I was getting the right gauge and the right project and that I liked how I was working the colors together into the um, fabric and I liked it. And I thought this is great. I'm going to make a jacket out of this. I wanted to make like a little sort of cardigan, but a little thicker so I could wear it out maybe on a cool fall day or something. Those first days that start to get a little crispy in the morning and you get excited for sweater weather. That's what I wanted. I wanted something I could just be really excited to put on and go walk the dog and stay warm and cozy, even if it's a drizzly fall cool morning. This is a free sweater project. I will link this if you're interested in the pattern. I'll put a link to this in the description of the video down below. I'll also put a link to LCB. I did pay for all of this. She did not send this to me because um, I always want to be clear about those things where stuff is coming from. This is the back of the jacket and it has these cables that that'll come up the you know in the center in the back and then this is the back piece that will be sewn on to the two front pieces and then the sleeves so it's kind of a traditional sort of construction of a jacket and it's lovely it's it's looking great right it's lovely so I where's the end of this ball oh it's over there it rolled away here's what I have left and so it's time to switch and if I look at the strand with my sample strands everything looks the same everything feels right it looks the same you can't tell which strand is which I can't can you let me know in the comments if you can tell so I have the rest of this all spun up I put it into a yarn cake to start my knitting this skein for some reason the grist is different it's different it uh, it just is so what it feels like to me is that I, I I spun that first skein how I wanted it to be and it matched my um, it matched my sample but then this one I think I drafted it just a little further than that one but I was still putting the same amount of twist into it so it doesn't quite feel like a thinner yarn until I start to work with it and it makes the fabric thinner because the diameter of the yarns are the same but this one has more fibers in that diameter and this one has less fibers in that diameter so as it gets bent and pulled up and worked into stitches there's less material in one than there is in the other and while it doesn't seem as drastic in the yarn itself, it definitely is noticeable in the fabric. So I changed my grist while I was spinning from one skein to the other. I changed my grist in a very subtle way and now it's affecting my fabric. So what can I do about it at this point? Well, nothing <laughs> I could bind this off and I don't know turn it into a cowl and then uh, do the rest of it from the same grist as where it changed or I could uh, I could spin more yarn to match this but the problem is I thought I was matching this this is a very subtle difference in fact it, it's almost impossible to show it on camera to actually see the difference because mostly if I look straight at it I can't even visually see the difference where the difference is I feel it in my fingers and I felt it as I held my tension 
um, that's where I could feel the difference, but it's, it's very subtle. So maybe I'm just being overly perfectionist, but I know I'm not the only one. So I wanted to share this with you. And I especially want to give you some five tips, uh, right now that are going to help maybe some of you not make the same mistake that I did with this big project. This is a big spin and this big project. All right, so let's just go through these tips and I, I hope they're helpful. Number one, keep a sample of the yarn you're spinning. Once you've done your samples and you've swatched and you've figured out what you want for your project, tie a little piece of that onto your, um, onto your wheel or onto part of your e-spinner or keep it next to your spindles or in your project bag or somewhere so that you can refer back to it constantly. If you start changing your yarn up, hopefully you'll, with that constant referral back to the original, you'll be able to notice when things start to change and get it back on track. Tip number two is one to follow if you can. I know sometimes things come up, but if you can, spin all the wool at once. Don't wait months in between uh, because we're human beings and that's a wonderful thing because our creativity is endless. But that means that little, little things can change in our spinning, our practice, our skills develop, things can change. So I'm a pretty consistent spinner with myself, but I'm a little nervous now because at this point, this project has it sat because I realized the grist was a problem and I kind of just put it away. So I'm sharing this with all of you now to kind of hold myself accountable to come back and finish this. But if you can avoid that, I would say spin it and then work your project. I know some of us love to flip back and forth between spinning and working and spinning and working and switching crafts is what keeps us energized to finish the entire project. So this tip might not work for everyone. Um, clearly, I didn't follow my own advice, so let's just go on ahead to tip number three. If you can, use the same equipment to spin your project. If you spin some of it on a spindle and some of it on a wheel, um, it takes a lot of skill to keep consistency across across equipment and also from changing whirl ratios. Uh, there's just, because this is such a subtle difference in the yarn and it made a big difference in the fabric, Subtle differences from one equipment to another can also make a difference in your fabric. Tip number four, don't do what I did because I'm pretty sure this is my mistake. Draft consistently throughout the project. If you're drafting one way, don't, don't mix it up and try drafting a completely different way because that completely different draft might be the thing that changes the density of your yarn and that will affect your grist overall. So I'm pretty sure that's where my mistake happened. <laughs> Try not to do that. And tip number five, if you like to split or pre-draft your fiber before you spin, do all of it at once. Split it the same exact way. Pre-draft it the same exact way. Because if you pre-draft some of your fiber and then you draft from just straight off the roving without fluffing or drafting, it really can make a difference in how that twist comes into the yarn and that can affect the density, the grist of the yarn. So try to pre-draft all at once if you prefer pre-drafting before you spin. If you can't help it and you end up with yarn that's on one equipment, other equipment, or just different grist in general, um, try and alternate those yarns so that throughout the fabric it kind of incorporates together so it gives it a little more consistency. I'm going to have a chunk of one and then a chunk of the other. It might be more noticeable. So I guess that's a tip and a half. So if you do end up with different yarns, uh, switch them up. So going forward with this project, I don't think I'm going to bind this off and keep this separate. I think I'm going to just continue with the yarn. I do have one thing going for this project, which is that because it has a moss stitch and some cables, it's a pretty thick fabric. Um, and so even though the other yarn is a little loftier, it's still going to have 
just because of the nature of the stitches a little more density and so I think that might not be as visually noticeable I might feel it when I wear it but it might not be as visually noticeable uh, so I think I'm just going to continue with it and and finish it I I think maybe it'll be a good teaching tool to show people you know aside from just a tiny little swatch but to show people hey look this is what happens if you change up your your yarn yards per pound your grist as you're working through a project um, and maybe to be able to see that in an entire garment um, but it is a self striping yarn and it is a textured stitch pattern so maybe that will hide <laughs> might hide my mistakes I don't know we'll see but I will be sure and follow up with you about this and hopefully if there is a big difference we will be able to see it on camera so I can share that as well let me know some ways that grist or yards per pound and maybe differences from one yarn to another has affected your projects knitting crochet spinning weaving whatever I would love to hear about your experiences and maybe we can help help each other not make some of these same mistakes um, that's my big goal so I will hopefully see you for a little chat down in the comment section as always happy spinning and I'll see you in the next video